Any further questions for Anu? I have one for you. Yes. When are you running for uh, <laughs> That is really not the topic of discussion today. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, leave you with two points. One is, let's open up our wallets for Anu, because she needs all the support. Uh, you know, it's critical that we get her elected. She's the right candidate. Let's do our little bit. You know, it's very easy to write a check. It's the easiest of thing to do compared to having Nadeem running for office, Anu running for office, you know, and going to all these coffee, pray, you know, it's like they don't have a life right now. And, and <laughs> we have a life, so let's write a check. Let's write a check for, for supporting them. And secondly, you know, I want to talk about a little bit uh, what we started with, you know, the apathy. You know, there is a general apathy. Of, and hopefully, you know, what you have heard today will sort of, uh, if, if at all any of us had, had had that apathy, let's break through that because it's very important for us to get out there and send the message out within our community across, not only within the Indian American community, across the board because we need to get everyone involved. I'll give you a quick example. You know, two years back, we had an issue called Measure Q in, in Saratoga. It's about two story, one story, a complex issue, right? And there was so, Saratoga is a very simple town, right? I mean, if uh, Anu said that sm uh, sleepy bedroom co community is Fremont, you know, we are pretty much in coma. You know, I mean, that, that's what we are. I'm not kidding you because there's nothing really that goes on here in Saratoga. But the politics is so vitriolic. I mean, you can't believe this. Every election cycle, people just wake up from their coma and they're out there. You know, it's like, I don't know what. And that measure Q basically uh, got the screws going for everybody, and they were out there. And I saw these Indian American uh, folks, you know, I mean, folks, my neighbors, they never quite understood the issue. And they were out there, you know, saying, we need to do this and that. I'm like, dude, you need to get involved, understand the issue first, right? <laughs> that is most important. What differentiates us from the folks who are illiterate in India and putting their uh, thumbprint on getting somebody elected versus us? You know, we agree, we are busy, you know, uh, think dual income, kids, and all that stuff. So we are busy, but you know, it takes very little time for us to really understand what the issues are. Get involved. Let's shake off the apathy. And when we get out here from today, but before you do that, please uh, support Anu. But once we get out here, let's spread that message of getting everybody involved. Get, get our community involved and, and, and take up a role. Take up a role, a small community role. You know, uh, Get on the board, commissions, things like that. This is exactly how we'll get involved, stay engaged and uh, position ourselves well. I mean, there are lots of little kids here, and that's been my mantra, because if we're not doing it for ourselves, we need to do it for our kids, because the next generation should be poised for successes, and we can make that happen. So thank you again, everyone, for being here. Enough, uh, yes. You know, all said, I just want to add one more thing. The grassroots movements have also spread through Facebook. So one appeal I want to make you, each of you, a little bit what you each of you can do sitting from your homes and things. Take a picture with Anu and say, I support Anu. And take as many friends as you can. So the grassroots movement which goes door to door knocking is also can be done through Facebook as well. Right. So I want each of you to take a picture today with Anu and post in the Facebook. Does she have a Facebook page? Yes. Yes. So Anu has a Facebook page and that's a very important, a very, very important point. Because, you know, now we have an issue in Saratoga High School where they're actually, um, uh, they are uh, basically PE was uh, optional because of a variety of things because kids do sports so PE was optional now they're turning it back into a mandatory thing which is impacting a lot of kids in 2014 so guess what you know some of us we actually went to Facebook and we launched a Facebook page a Facebook event invite to the board meeting so you know a lot of people we really enjoy living vicariously right looking at oh what is well, what was that vacation like right but you know Facebook it's an amazing amazing tool so if you haven't if you don't have a Facebook account yet Get it, because you can really make a lot of difference. You know, I mean, there are lots of ways you can leverage Facebook. It's an amazing tool. Anu's already doing that, and all of us can do that as well. There was another question over there. I wanted to know, is there a financial goal uh, for Anu's campaign? Because you said the deadline is today. So is that a financial well, well, deadline? There is a deadline today, but she's going to keep fundraising after today as well. I was just mentioning today, because it is a critical deadline, but if you know, if you can, if, if you can talk to your friends tomorrow, yep. you can also ask them to give so until election. To Just a so, um, so again, uh, Fremont is 92 square miles, 88,000 vo registered voters. Uh, hopefully, we can get that to 92,000 before October 22nd. In order to send one mail piece, it takes about 27,000. And so uh, I'd like to be able to send more than one. So my goal is to raise between 120 and 140,000. We have a contribution limit of 540 per person. 
And so it, it, it makes it, uh, I now have to go to reach out to a lot more people to make that happen instead of getting a few big checks. I'm probably about 60% of the way there. And so as R said, today um, the deadline is something that, that they compare with amongst the candidates. So if my opponents have more money than, than, than I do, then they are looked at as more serious contenders than I will be. So today is really about the financial goal. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. So um, in terms of it's a new thing, whatever ideas you have, how much of uh, data is being needed by the federal government or uh, agencies like that? So can you share some of the can you deliver on anything that you want to, or is there a the So there, there is a process. Uh, there is a system in place. And um, yes, there's always hope about changing things, but change happens much slower in the public sector than it does in any other sector. So you know, having worked in the system for seven years, being realistic about what can and cannot be achieved, I'm not going to overpromise. Uh, when people come up and say, you can get this done, you can get the downtown done in two years. No, it's not. It's going to take 10 years to get there. And so I think that there is the sense of um, hope and sense of change, but tempered by the fact that we are working within an existing system, and to change that is not going to happen so dramatically or so fast. And so um, while we streamline and tweak and continue to, to, to make the process better, it's never going to be a startup. It's never going to be the private sector. And we need to acknowledge that and come together and see how we can best work together given the existing system without saying, let's throw that out. I know I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what do you do with the funds that are raised for outsiders in the politics? What, sure. What is, where does the money go for? Yeah. So uh, the bulk of the money goes to probably about 65 to 70% goes to the mail campaign. So you send out mail pieces to targeted voters. So it's a fairly rigorous analysis of who you should send the mail pieces to and how you're targeting the people. So um, about 65% of the money goes towards that. Then there's also signs that you put up. So there's, there's money involved in that. And then it's uh, primarily um, looking at other things that you need to do. I mean, there's uh, to get on slate cards and other mail pieces. Um, buying, if you have the money, if you can raise the money to, to buy ads um, on television and, and get your support out there. So it's primarily just getting your message out. It's communication, <coughs> outreach, marketing. Um, I mean, again, if you raise extra money, um, local races, this doesn't happen, but in, in state and other races, when you raise more than 250000 you spend money on polling to find out from people what the specific issues are and what the target audience is. And that takes about twenty five to 30000 so, um, in a race like mine, unless I raise two hundred thousand dollars, I can't do a poll. So it's 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 again predominantly predominantly uh, going towards outreach and marketing. Yeah. Um, how are you reaching out to people in Fremont? Because I met somebody here who is from Fremont, and they said they they haven't heard about me. They haven't heard about me. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the name of this person. <laughs> Somebody uh, living in a silo, perhaps. I'm gonna be, I know. Haven't they seen signs plastered throughout the city? So that's what you're doing. It's it's a whole host of things. I mean, if you have the name of the person, tell me because we have volunteers that are knocking on doors. Today, I walked for five hours uh, with a team of 30 people, while going door to door. Again, this person may not be on our list of targeted. Um, uh, outreach because I mean if this person hasn't voted in the last three elections that person falls off the radar and that's what Ash and Rishi were talking about is if we don't get involved nobody's going to come and ask for the vote and, but if, if there's a specific person that hasn't heard about the candidates or the issues please send me the name and we'll make sure that we reach out to them specifically and there's also forums and um, uh, the League of Women Voters has a forum our website has information about candidate events um, over the last three weeks, and I'm sure uh, uh, there's a huge Indian population there, right? I think they're really excited to know about you. I think there's, there's a targeted outreach to the Indian American population, but the Indian American population and the number of people that actually take the trouble to vote is less than 6%. And that's part of the problem. That's the, that's the thing that we've been talking about. So 
if you know specific people, I mean, and again, I do meet and greets. I mean, if you can get 10 people to your house and invite your friends that haven't heard about this race or election, I'm happy to come there and talk with them. And, and you know, I think uh, we can we can help Anu get out there, reach people. Uh, Kerry, uh, is, uh, she has the envelope that uh, you can actually put the uh, donation checks in. So please talk to Kerry, and there is also a table there with the uh, donation envelope. So, so please, at this point, what we'll do is a little entertainment for everyone. We have an amazing Bay Area Kalakar. It's uh, Samson Kalitkar, and he's here. And uh, I don't know what he's going to do, but he's pretty much going to roast every single one of you. So are you ready for that? I'm going to turn it over to Samson. Here you go. Big round of applause for Samson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, setting high standards for me, trying to roast everybody. Uh, you guys doing good so far? Everybody, yes? Uh, now everybody's running after the money, so nobody's paying attention to me. That's a good start. <laughs> uh, for those of you still here, hello. And uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about me, because I know every speaker who came up here was like, it's all about Anu, it's all about Anu, and everyone was speaking about you, but I'm a comedian, so it's all about me, it's all about me. And uh, that's how it is. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll try and uh, cover as many people as I can. Uh, first, me, uh, I, uh, I, I, I'd like to start by addressing what just came up as the last question that came up and the lady just walked away. Uh, there's some person she met in Fremont who hasn't heard about you and uh, I like the way you answered like uh, they need to know about me just as much as I need to know about them because uh, I was in Fremont earlier today and I met like 2,000 Indians who don't know about me either. So, uh, if you can get them to your house party and then invite me to do some comedy, uh, maybe they'll get to know me as well. Hmm? See how it's all about me, you see? <laughs> but uh, I uh, recently auditioned for America's Got Talent. And, oh no, relax, I didn't make it. Uh, I like all your enthusiasm, but the point is, when, when you go audition for a television show, they give you this big, long form to fill up. And one of the questions on the form was, what has been your biggest struggle in life? But I'm like, what has my struggles got to do with my comedy? <laughs> but I do understand it's a television show, so they want to play up the emotion factor and be like, oh, look at this poor kid from the third world on American television now. Vote for him. Watch our show. We'll bring you more weirdos. I get that part, right? <laughs> but when I looked at that question, what has been my biggest struggle in life? I wanted to put none. None, when I look at all these struggles that my parents have been through, right? Both my parents, born and raised in the third world, spent their entire life in the third world, raised a family of four, living in a 360 square feet apartment. My mom worked two jobs, my dad worked two jobs, and put me through college. And then I came to America, where my biggest struggle is that I get depressed every time I post what I think is clever on Facebook, and not enough people like it. <laughs> Does that count? Apparently not. <laughs> so instead of America's Got Talent, I am entertaining Anuna Trajan's fundraiser. Yay! Yay! Made it. <laughs> uh, and so I heard a couple of things, so I'm, I'm, I'm quickly going to address those. And uh, uh, first of all, I, I need to let you guys know, uh, I'm probably the only person here living in San Francisco. Anybody else from? No? Okay. Mostly South Bay and East Bay. Now, I used to live in the South Bay. I have lived in uh, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, Mountain View. Uh